of people what, love that. What do they pay for something like that? I forgot what USA Today paid me. They paid me, though. I, <laughs> they hey, paid you well. USA Today, I was part of USA Today. I was, the second week they started, I was on. I was there 20 years. Wow. So you were at the beginning of USA Today and the beginning of CNN. Well, five years in. I was on the fifth anniversary of CNN. Wow. I went on. 25 and a half years. Because the first time I remember you was I uh, was a kid and I heard you late at night on Mutual oh, Broadcast. Yeah, that was the greatest. And it was fascinating. Oh, what a show. Midnight to five in the morning. And you knew everything. That's there what. There were always great things on that show. How did you know so much? Bill stuff? Cosby would run across the causeway to come on. Danny Kaye did a whole night with me. Danny Kaye, the Danny unbelievable great. Danny Kaye. Where was this uh, set? At, in Arlington, Virginia, right across Virginia. from the right across from Washington, right yeah, yeah. across the yeah. causeway, little causeway there. And it was uh, it was a tremendous show to do. I had such fun. And then I got CNN, and I was doing both. So I'd be on CNN from 9 to 10, and then I'd rush over and be on the radio from 12 to 5. Good God. But and then you I feel had a like... heart attack, and then I reduced the show to three hours, the radio show, and then I, I was making enough money. I didn't need both, and I chucked the radio. But I loved that radio show. Oh, God. In the middle of the night, open gave Open phone that America. Time. After the, the guest would be on from 12 to 3. I'd do an hour and a half interview, then an hour and a half of phone calls. And then from 3 to 5 was open phone America. Yeah, it was like... People could call... Play Misty for about me. About anything. Yeah, it was like that. You could, I would, I'd play music, I'd talk. One guy would talk about the Red Sox, the next guy would talk about the president, and crazy things happened on that show. One night, 3 in the morning, Bill Clinton, governor of Arkansas, called in. Like 20 after 3. Wow. To talk about an issue. I got a good story And then I him. said to him, what are you doing up at 20 after 3? Yeah. And he said, don't ask. <laughs> <laughs> I should have known that. We, um, we I have a great to, story about him. We what have is to, the story? Yeah. Bill Clinton, the yeah. governor of Arkansas? I love Bill. <clears throat> he became great the president. Time. I heard about it. <laughs> oh, you read that paper? Yeah, I read okay. that. We have to go to commercial? Yeah, we have to, we have to pay the bills. Who's, for... who's the sponsor? <laughs> <laughs> a sponsor? Pikesville, uh, Nick. Oh, who's... <laughs> Pikesville Al does not like him. <laughs> Many people don't. Why doesn't that cock work? Why doesn't that cock work? That no, cock works. My, my cock works. Oh, this clock over here. Mine, mine is going yeah. somewhere, Norm. No, I thought that's what you said. I was trying to. What? No, no, iron, 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 iron horse. What do you say? Iron. Uh, iron. You got it right. Iron, iron. <laughs> that clock is set at ten past ten, and Why? that's because this guy drinks like a fish, and we want to remember, you know, remind him to how drive. to drive. You're supposed to put your hands at ten and two. Did you know that? No. That's all very true. You never heard that? No. You never heard tell of that? Tell of that? You never heard tell of that? You know, nobody says that anymore. You never heard tell of that? When you drive, you're supposed to put your hands on 10 and 2. Oh, yeah, 10 and 2. 10 and 2. Nobody does that. No, everybody goes like this. No, one hand on that. You don't smoke? No, I used to smoke. Oh, I got a heart attack. You ever miss it, though, like crazy? You know something? I smoked three packs a day for 30 years. I had a heart attack when I was 53 years old. I stopped smoking that day and never wanted one again, and I don't understand how I didn't want one. That's, that's, that's fantastic. Wrong. Wrong never wanted you. one. Never reached for one. And I was a smoker, man. I smoked. Jeez, and I never, I got scared. I had a psychiatrist friend said that what happened to me was I, uh, I got scared straight. And as I was so scared lying in that hospital, having the doctor say you're having a heart attack, asking if I'm going to live, and saying didn't know, that... It, it went out of me. So if I had a desire for it, it was gone. And then it was three days in in the, the unit where you couldn't smoke. And I, then you could smoke in hospitals, but in that unit you couldn't. So the body need for it was gone. So then it was the habit. And I never reached, I never chewed gum. That's, I didn't, didn't hold a pencil. But I right see now. it, uh, Nate and Al's, you're still snarfing down them pastrami's like that. No, I don't go there anymore. I have my Brooklyn water bagel. Ugh. Oh, on Beverly. Oh, Beverly. Oh, yeah, my God, it's the great. best bagels in America. We, they make the water there. It's a, it's a franchise. They've got 20 of them now in America. They make water. They make the water and make the bagels, and the secret is the water. It's the best bagel. I thought bagel. only God made water. <laughs> only How do you God make water? Made... Yeah, how do you make water? They make water. <laughs> they That's like the old, who was that great, Dave, Stephen Wright? Oh, great. Oh, Stephen he, Wright, Remember yes. him? He used to have that great, yeah, great game. There's a new product out called... Uh, uh, Powdered water, 
What do you mix it with? You know, Larry. You know, Larry. You know, Larry's, Larry's stand doing stand-up. Yeah, I, I did really comedy all over the country. Yeah. I did tell funny stories. I, I can't wait to hear all about it. So well, we, we got to go to a commercial, break, though. We, I want to hear all about your your venture into stand-up. Sure. I think that's Happy. what I'm most excited I love it. about. All right, so when we come back, yeah, you're hilarious. One of the great figures of the 20th century has to be James Brolin. The more I think about it, the more I love chicken. A great, great meat. If Timothy McVeigh is guilty of this terrible Oklahoma City bombing, then they should put that guy in jail for a long, long time. <laughs> you did a great meat. It was all that... I loved your... your How did you come out with that? That's... When you parodied me, <laughs> I think you were the best. Oh, you know exactly. why? It wasn't so much you had the voice, but you had the, the concept. The key in parody is not to get the voice right. It's to get the concept right. He was doing my old column in USA Today when I would do these random thoughts, and he had it down perfect. And you had the look, of course, the glasses. I, I like your, your body language. Leaning forward, you had all that. So he <laughs> now, was is that conscious? Is that a power? I don't know. Oh, no, no. I, not, I, I, nothing you do is conscious. No, nothing. I yeah. never approached the camera or broadcasting. I was just natural to me. Just came natural to me. I never thought about a question I was going to ask. I never pre-planned. I just went to the moment. I always love that. I read. I read that the, the way you approach an interview is you approach it as if you're a viewer watching. He wouldn't have read that. I don't. I no, don't know. Right, but I don't. Uh, the question is, I don't know. Uh, my friend Herbie Cohen, who wrote "You Can Negotiate Anything," says the secret to my success is really, is, uh, is, is being kind of stupid. Not stupid, but look, I'm not a know-it-all. I knew that I didn't know. Once I knew that I didn't know, the guest counted. Because the guest knew more than me. The comedian knew more about comedy. Lawyer knew more about law. Politician knew more about politics. Doctor knew more about medicine. So I had the great chance to be paid and learn. My God, why would I go on and do things about me when I had these chance to interview all these incredible people? And, and they paid you for this. I didn't go to college. I got a learning experience. You're getting paid at the same time to ask questions of famous people. It was an incredible way to make but a living. You're an enormously curious person. Yeah, I never got over that. I yeah. never got over that. I'm the last person you want to sit next to on an airplane. <laughs> I, I just, I, I engage people in common. But I can remember being a kid, eight, nine years old, get on a bus, and I'd say to the bus driver, why do you want to drive a bus? You're what do you get out of driving a bus? <laughs> built for it. I right started a show in a restaurant in Miami Beach. I was 23 years old. Pumper, uh, Pumper Nick's restaurant, and people would come in. Bobby Darren came in one day. He was the first famous person I ever interviewed. I never, I didn't know who would come Artificial in. Artificial flowers. <laughs> the best record. That <laughs> was my thing. Everybody talks about Mac the Knife. Yeah. But artificial flowers. Oh, pretty from, dark, from though. The, pretty yeah, dark. from the Broadway show Tenderloin. Mm. Alone in the world was poor, poor little, little, little land. Man. With garland of flowers. Now she's up in heaven selling yeah. artificial, no more artificial no flowers, more, selling no real flowers. No more artificial flowers. No dum dum flowers. No dum dum flowers. Bobby was the best. Bobby Darren and I walked down the now, street. Now, wasn't Bobby Darren fated to die? Didn't yeah, oh, well, you just, you, he, we walked down Collins Avenue, yeah. and I said to him, "What? where does that come from, your energy? He said, I'm 36 years old, and I'm not going to make it to 42. He had oh. rickets as a, that heart disease oh as a kid, gosh. so he knew he was he knew he was gonna, never going to make the middle age. I mean, he was an incredible guy. But people would come in a restaurant, and cold. I would just interview people. I interviewed a plumber once yeah. for like forty five minutes. <laughs> I was fascinated by plumbing. You are. I'll tell you why. No, he told me things I still remember, fifty one years later. Yeah. When you buy a house, keep it clean. No, this is clean. <laughs> oh, yeah. When you buy a house. Oh, yeah. Most people, you know, get the inspectors and everything. The first person you should have inspect the house you're buying is a plumber. Yeah. Because the plumbing is the key to your house. Bad plumbing, you have a house that will destroy you and cost you fortune. Money, Pat. Have the plumber go down, look at the pipes and everything. Plumbing is the key to a house. Really? I never forgot that. 51 years of so And what do yeah. you get? What was, what was his fascination with making a house work? Yeah. You know, like, yeah, yeah. think about it. We take things for granted. Where does the water go when you turn it down the sink? Yeah, see, I don't know. None of that is interesting to me, but that's what, that's why you're so great. Everybody's interesting. Everybody's you interesting. Have you met Fred Stoller? 
He was on a few weeks ago. What? Fred Stowe. I, said I love Fred. I was Who is sure. Fred Stowe? The name sounds like I should know him. No, he's just a guy. But he's, <laughs> he's just the guy. He's saying he's not inter he, He's so uninteresting that even you wouldn't be interested. I think that's what does Fred Stoller do? No, he's a, he's actually a very funny guy. He's a he's he a wrote, comic. He wrote for um, Seinfeld for a year. Oh, really? Well, yeah. that's I think Larry it's David is the genius of all. I think oh, yeah. I watch old Seinfeld ex episodes. They're perfect. I would have to say that the genius that led right into his later shows. The, the stories all came together at the end. The, the use of the characters. I just interviewed uh, uh, Louis Dreyfus. Oh yeah, Julia. Julia, and she talked about when they conceived that show and putting it together, how they would sit and go over the scripts and laugh yeah. their heads off, and the way they, the way he worked. Larry David is a genius. He's a genius. And Curb he your enthusiasm. Out. That's oh, yeah. great. Sure. Is it, did you ever do Curb Your Enthusiasm? No, no, no. I asked if I could do it. Yeah, I did too. I would love to have been on that show. Because yeah. all he gave you was a uh, outline. You know, there was no script, really. Right, yeah. He had an outline, and you had lived it. Yeah. You know, he you would tell you. Veep? Oh, I love Veep. I do, too. That's why I talked to her about Veep. Subscribe to Nomburger King.